Mimi here with another tutorial as part of the Mimi G for Michael Levine collaboration. Now, today we're going to be making a really cute workout slash yoga type shirt that you can wear to the gym or outside of the gym with a great pair of leggings. We're going to be using a commercial pattern, but don't worry, it's super simple and I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. The pattern that we're going to be using is New Look 6230. This is one of my favorite patterns for a really great t-shirt and we're going to uh, make it in two lengths. I've already made it in a tunic length, which is behind me, and for the tutorial I'm going to be making it just a regular t-shirt length. Now, the uh, really great option about this t-shirt pattern is that it has the ability to have the sleeves in different colors or like we're doing uh, in this tutorial, the top is one color and the bottom is another, which is really great, really funky and gives you a lot of design options. Let's talk tools. Now, of course, you're going to need the pattern, like I said, and the pattern pieces that you're going to need to cut out are uh, pattern numbers five, six, seven, and eight. Now, in case you're unsure what that is, Eight will look like this. This is the neckband. You're going to be cutting the back piece, which is piece number six. You're going to cut out the sleeve, which is uh, piece number seven. And you're going to be cutting out the front piece, which is number five. Cut the pattern according to your size. And remember to make sure and look at the finished measurements on the tissue paper before you cut your pattern. You want to make sure that you cut your pattern according to this measurement and not the measurement on the back of the envelope. Once you cut out all of your pattern pieces, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need some pattern weights or big washers, which I pick up at my local home improvement store. You're going to need some pins. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a seam ripper in case you make a mistake and you need to rip your seams out, and then either a chalk roller or a fabric marking pen to make some lines onto our fabric. Now for fabric, you're going to need two different color fabrics if you plan to do the color, the uh, shirt in two different colors like the one behind me. If you just want to use one color, then you can just use one color. Um, if you're going to be doing two colors, make sure that the fabrics that you're using are either the same exact fabric in, in uh, different colors or they are the same kind of weight. You don't want one to be heavier than the other. Of course, you're going to be using a knit fabric and it can be something like a lightweight knit or anything that resembles maybe a t-shirt you already have at home. And I will, of course, have links to all of the suggested fabrics in the blog post so that you can go directly to what I think will work really great for this tutorial. Once you have all of your pattern pieces cut out, we're going to lay out our fabric and we're going to cut these out. There are a couple things you need to know before we get started. I want you to make sure that the sleeve pattern is long enough for you. And so what I mean is I want you to put the pattern up to your shoulder like this and I want you to make sure that the bottom of your pattern piece hits your fingertips. Now the reason I want it to be long enough is because I've created thumb holes at the bottom of the sleeve which are optional. You can either leave this open or not when we get to that point. Um, and so in order for this to fit comfortably, it needs to come down to below your knuckles. And so in order to do that, you need an extra long sleeve. So when you put your pattern piece up to your shoulder and the bottom of the pattern does not reach your fingertips, I want you to notice how much more you need to go in order for it to do so. And I'm going to have you add that to the bottom of your sleeve pattern. The other thing that I want to make sure that you know is that we're going to be adding length to this if you want to make it a tunic length like this one here. If you want to make it a tunic length, you're going to be placing the front pattern piece against your body, kind of like this, and you're going to make sure that you uh, take note of how long you want this to be. Now this particular pattern piece comes to just below my belly, probably about two and a half inches below my belly button. And I know that I want it to be a little longer than that, so I'm going to add about four inches to this pattern piece. Now, if that was a little bit confusing, don't worry. When we get to actually cutting our fabric, I will make sure to stop and make note of the things that I just pointed out. I'm going to be making the body of my shirt in this heather gray fabric, and I'm going to make the lower part of my sleeve and my neckband in the black fabric. And you can use whatever combination you'd like. So I've laid my gray fabric out and I have folded it with right sides together and the folded edge is facing me, my, uh, towards me. And I'm going to take pattern piece number five, which is the front pattern piece, and it says cut on the fold. So I want to make sure that I lay this piece on the fold of my fabric. I'm going to take my pattern weights. And 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the length now. And so however much you wanted to add to, to the length of your t-shirt, that's what you're going to measure down from here. And you're going to make a new marking. I'm only going down about four inches. So I'm going to take my ruler and my chalk roller. And I'm going to measure down about five inches because I'm going to take into account about five eighths of an inch for a uh, hem allowance. So I'm going to measure down five inches. And I'm going to make a little line and I'm going to take that line across. And then if you have an essay curve, which is really handy. And if you follow any of my tutorials, you know that it's kind of like my best friend in my sewing room. You can use this to gradually uh, go from your hip down to the new line that you've created. You can also do this by hand by simply eyeing it. But I like to use my uh, hip curve ruler. So I'm basically just placing my curve down there. I'm going to follow it all the way down. And this creates a nicer gradual curve than if maybe you were doing it by hand. And so now I've created a new line and I've added the five inches to the length. Now that I've made my new markings, that's where I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut starting at the bottom where my new line is. And then I'm going to cut around my pattern piece. I want to make sure that I make little tiny snips where you see these little triangles. These are called notches. So you want to make sure that you make just a little tiny snip. And I'm going to cut. And now what I've done is I've basically added five inches of length to this pattern piece. And this is what the front will look like. So now you can set this piece aside. And you can grab the next piece, which is going to be piece number six. Let me adjust my fabric so you guys can see. The next piece we're going to uh, lay out is piece number six. And this is the back piece. It is not cut on the fold. It does have a center back seam. It gives you a better fit, actually, when it has a center back seam. So I'm just going to lay this down. And I am going to add the same amount of length that I added to the front piece. So I'm going to measure down five inches again. Make a little line and then I'm going to make another line all the way across. And then I'm going to use my essay curve. And I'm just going to follow the natural curve. You're going to cut this piece out the same way you did the other. You can put this pattern piece away. And now you should have two pieces like this for your back. Next, I'm going to have you cut out your neck band. And we only need to cut out one of these. Now you'll notice that this particular pattern piece has several notches and a bunch of dots. Now it doesn't look like much now, but when you start to attach your neckband to your neck on your shirt, you'll notice what those dots and, um, and notches are for. So um, if you see your notches, make sure that you clip it at the size that you cut out. You'll see it has a 4, 6, 8, 12, whatever. So I cut out the 4, so I'm going to snip at the 4. And I'm also going to snip where I see these little tiny circles. And the reason I'm going to do that is because every circle is going to match up to a seam. And so I want to make sure that I know where those seams and those dots match. If you are planning to do the sleeve in two different colors, like the one behind me and the one I'm going to do in this tutorial, then I need you to cut through this line. Now you'll notice on the pattern piece that there are uh, two lines here. Those are lengthening lines. You, know, you can either make it longer or make it shorter. So it's an, actually an adjustment line. So you can lengthen or you can shorten this pattern piece uh, at the elbow essentially. But we're just going to be adding the length to the bottom of our pattern piece. So the only reason we're cutting this is so that we can cut the bottom piece in one color and the top in another. So grab your fabric or your paper scissors and you're just going to cut through one of those lines. 
like this. Now, we're going to first start with the uh, top piece. And so you decide what color you want your top sleeve to be. And so mine is gonna be gray. Adjust your fabric. Take the top pattern piece and lay it on top of your fabric. Put your pattern weights down. Now before we cut, we're going to add a seam allowance because now we've cut this and we need to add the seam allowance so when these two are joined back together, we don't actually remove any length. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna measure down 5 eighths of an inch and you're gonna make a new line. And that's gonna be our new cutting line. We're gonna add the same seam allowance to the bottom piece. And now you're just gonna cut it out. Make sure to transfer your notches, so make little slits where you see notches. Remove your weights. Now you have two top sleeves. Set this color aside and get the other color that you're gonna be working with. For me, that's gonna be black. And now using the bottom portion of my sleeve, I'm going to put my pattern weights down. And I need to do two things. I need to add a seam allowance, so I'm gonna actually measure up 5 eighths of an inch from the top of this sleeve. And I'm gonna make a new line so that I don't forget. And now, if you needed to add length to the sleeve pattern, you're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna add, just to be safe, I'm gonna add two inches to the bottom of mine. So I'm going to measure from the bottom down two inches and I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to cut around these lines. All right, you should have your front piece which was cut on the fold. You should have two pieces for the back. And you should have the top portion of our sleeve, so you should have two. And then you should have the contrast color of the bottom portion of your sleeve and our neckband. Now that you've got all of your pieces cut out, let's go sew. Okay, the first pieces we're gonna sew together are the two back pieces. So I want you to lay them with right sides together and we're going to sew all the way down the center back. We're going to be using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and using a straight stitch. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Now that we've sewn our center back piece together, go ahead and take it to your iron and I want you to press your seams open. So open your seams like this and you're gonna give it a good press. Now we're gonna construct our sleeve before attaching it to our uh, top. So what I want you to do is I want you to lay your bottom piece over your top piece for your sleeve. And you can use pins if you need to, to help you keep these together. And the right sides are facing each other. And you're going to sew using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So now your sleeve looks like this. And now you're going to fold it the long way. In the center, here at the top, and then at the bottom. Okay. 
Now in order to create the thumb hole, you're going to start from the bottom of the sleeve. You're going to sew up about one and a half inches and then you're going to stop and back stitch. Like this. And then you're going to leave a two inch opening and you're going to back stitch and sew all the way up. Now you can turn your sleeve right sides out and as you can see we've created our thumb hole. Now we're going to set this aside for just a second and you're going to construct this other sleeve the same exact way that we just did this one. Now you should have both of your sleeves sewn together and turned right sides out. If you want to give it a good press uh, at the ironing table you should. And now we're going to attach our front piece to our back piece. So I want you to lay your front piece on top of your back piece with right sides facing each other. And we're going to sew each side. So if you want to use a couple of pins, pin at the top, middle, and bottom. So using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way up. Now we've sewn one side seam and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now we've sewn together our front and back pieces. Now we're going to attach our sleeves. Okay, now I want you to grab one sleeve and what we're going to do is we're going to first align our uh, seams and you want to make sure that you're aligning it to the right side so the back piece of your sleeve has two notches and the back piece of your top has two notches. So you want to make sure that you're pinned at your notches with right sides together so both the shirt are right sides out and the sleeve is also with the right sides out. And we're going to pin at the notches first and the front has one notch and the back has two notches. That's how you know you're using the right sleeve on the right side. And you want to pin at your seams. So match up your seams and put a little pin there. And then you're going to pin at the top of one side and the top of the other side. Now you're going to sew in the shape of a U. So we're going to start at one side and using 5 eighths of an inch as your seam allowance. So 
sew all the way around. Now we have attached one of our sleeves. Now we're going to pin the other sleeve the same way. Now that we have both of our sleeves attached, before we attach our neckband, we're going to sew the hem of our sleeve and the bottom hem of our top. So for the bottom, you're going to turn over an inch and a half. I'm going to place your presser foot against the edge of your fabric and you're going to sew all the way down, all the way around. Now take it to the iron and give it a good press and then you're going to turn over a half of it, half of an inch on your sleeve. And with this side of your presser foot aligned along the edge of your fabric, you're going to sew all the way around. Cut off any loose threads and take it to the ironing table and give it a good press. Now I've pressed my band and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pinning. And what you want to do is you're going to pin at the seams first. So we have a center back seam, right? Here it is. So we're going to align the center back seam of our shirt with the uh, center back seam of our neckband. And you're going to pin there first. And remember we had some little dots that correspond to the seams. So if you made a notch like you were supposed to where you had the little dot on your pattern piece, this dot corresponds to the first shoulder seam, so I want you to pin there. Then you have another little notch that was another little dot and that corresponds to the other seam. And so we're going to pin there. Now working on the other way, you're going to do the same thing. So that first little notch matches up to the side to the seam for the sleeves and then the other little dot that we made a little slit matches the other seam I want you to pin there and then we're going to pin at the center so now we have our band pinned in place. If you can remove the arm of your sewing machine, I suggest you do. It just makes it easier to sew all the way around. And we're going to start 
at the center back. So we're going to place it under the machine, put our presser foot down, and I want you to align your fabric at the half inch mark. Not the and as you can see, there's a little bit of a ripple here. There's more space. That's because as we're attaching, we're going to pull a little bit so that it's flat. Go slow. You want to sew all the way around, keeping your fabric aligned at the half inch mark. Now the band is attached all the way around. And so of course we want to give it a good press, but before we do that, we're going to actually stitch on the top. So we're going to top stitch, starting at the back where we did, uh, where we attached our band at the center back. I want you to put your needle in and you're going to sew on the gray fabric pretty close to that edge, about uh, maybe about an eighth away and we're going to top stitch all the way around. Now that we have sewn our neckband and we did our top stitching, you're gonna take it to the ironing table and you're gonna give this a good press. There you guys have it, all done. Super easy and pretty fabulous. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will talk to you guys again really soon. Peace.